it finally feels like fall here in the southeast and that means we are doing some yummy comfort food yummy comfort soups this week hey y'all i'm mandy and this is mandy in the making one of our favorite meals is shepherd's pie or cottage pie there's there's a difference one is made with one certain type of meat anyway we just call it all shepherd's pie here this is a shepherd's pie soup y'all this sounds divine and we're gonna get started right now okay the recipe says that we need to measure out some of our ingredients and let them sit at room temperature while we're doing everything else and that includes sour cream so i need three-fourths a cup of sour cream this is a three-fourths cup measure so let's put that here and we're just gonna let it sit out at room temperature while we're doing everything else the same goes with our half and half we need two cups of this um, so I'm gonna measure that out and let it sit out too we're also gonna go ahead and shred our cheese we need two cups of cheddar cheese and in case you're wondering two cups is usually about a half a block of cheese so if you're ever wondering a whole block will get you four cups of cheese. So we've got all of that. We're gonna let that sit at room temperature while we prep everything else. Okay, so we need to chop up our potatoes and put them in this pot here. We're just going to basically make mashed potatoes like normal. As far as how many potatoes you need, for this recipe, you need about two pounds of russet potatoes. Okay, we are going to cover these in water and boil these for 10 to 15 minutes until they're tender and then we'll move on. We've got our potatoes on the stove. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up this onion. It's good. Thank the Lord. I'm telling you what, so many of the onions I've been getting lately have not been good. We're gonna chop up this large onion. I'm gonna use my chopper over here because it just helps so much. That was a whole lot quicker and easier. Okay, so you could definitely just use a regular skillet and then bring out your soup pot afterwards, but I'm trying to minimize how much, um, how many dishes I'm having to do. So I'm just going to brown my ground beef. I've got 85% lean, one pound ground beef. If you are new here, Every now and then we like to read comments from you guys here on screen and we just respond to those. We call this little segment the commentator segment. Hello, commentator. Hello. Go ahead. All right. This is from Larry. He said, would y'all consider adopting a 65-year-old man that would never see except at meal? I said, oh, I, I that you would never that see. you would never see except at meal time. <laughs> sure, Larry. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. It made my whole day. Uh, Oh, I, you're not the first one to ask that, actually, but um, that's really cute. Larry, he wants us to adopt him just for mealtime. I get it. I get it. We've got about eight or nine more minutes here. I just drained this to this plate here, so I'm just going to let this hang out. I had turned this one back off. We're going to put it back on medium, and we're going to grab two tablespoons of this butter and put it in the skillet and let that melt. Now into the melted butter, we're gonna add in our large onion that I diced. And we're gonna cook this until it's softened. So for maybe five minutes or so. Um, I still had a little bit of grease in there from the ground beef. That doesn't matter, it just adds more flavor. It's all good. I got sidetracked and I was on the phone. Who's shocked? Um, <laughs> but you wanna add in about three cloves of minced garlic. You know, you just add it till you, it feels right. I'm gonna go with that amount and let that cook for another minute. Okay, I just drained these. I tried to show that to you and all I did was fog up the, but anyway, these have been drained. They're gonna sit here until I'm ready to do that, but let's go back over here. I've got a quarter cup of flour. We're gonna whisk this in here a little at a time. Kind of cook that through. Okay, that's been cooking for about a minute. Now, what we're gonna do is add our chicken broth. We need four cups, so this whole carton of chicken broth. We're gonna add it in small amounts and just continue to whisk. Okay, we've got it all added in there. I added it slowly at first, but then towards the end, once everything was kind of broken up, I was able to add it quicker. Quicker? Quickler? <laughs> I am turning up the heat to about medium high because we do want this to come to a simmer here in just a minute. Before that, though, we're gonna add in some more things. So. Just a splash or two of the dub sauce. We need some Italian seasoning. Be careful if you have this one from Sam's Club, the lid will come off. If you remember that video, let's see, what kind of emoji can you give me below? Give me a fall leaf emoji, any color, it doesn't matter. If you remember when the lid came off of this grinder, you need about two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. We need a half a teaspoon of ground mustard. It calls for ground sage, but all I have is the rubbed sage, which is not quite as fine, but I think it'll be okay. You only need, oh, good thing. I thought this was like a, 
like a shaker top. No, no, it's not. Good thing I looked. You only need a quarter teaspoon of this, so just a very small amount of sage. You don't want to overpower it. I'm going to stir all of that in. We're going to slowly add in the half and half. I've got two cups of it. I'm going to kind of whisk it as I go. And we want this whole thing to come up to a simmer. It was getting close to it, and then I added in this half and half. So it's going to take it a couple more minutes to come back up to temperature. So I'm going to let this come up to a simmer. And while we let that do its thing, let's go handle the mashed potatoes. Now I'm going to add in, gosh, you're welcome. I'm going to add in a tablespoon of butter. I'm not too worried about there being absolutely no lumps at all. I don't mind that in the soup. I think it'll be nice to have. So I'm just roughly mashing this. And then after I've mashed it, we're gonna add in our sour cream that's been sitting out. So we had that three fourths a cup of sour cream that's been sitting at room temperature and let's just stir that in. So we're not adding our normal milk or cream because that's already in the soup. Okay, this has come to a bowl. We are going to reduce it to a simmer. Let me stir this, I'm still zoomed in. Let me, let me fix that. There we go. I have turned the heat down. We're just gonna let this simmer. I think it's time to add the potatoes in. Let me go check. It is time to add our potatoes in. So I've got them here. I'm gonna add them in in small amounts. It says you can use an immersion blender if you really want smooth and creamy. I'm not so worried about that. I really don't mind there being some lumps in there. So that is up to you. If you want it really creamy with zero potato lumps at all, grab your immersion blender and handle that. Okay, I wanna show you what this consistency looks like right now. We're gonna bring this back up to a simmer. So I'm just letting it hang out for just a minute. I'm gonna grab my ground beef. We're gonna add it back in. It has not come back up to a simmer, but it doesn't need to. It's just heating through. So let's add our ground beef in, hopefully not all in one clump and it splashes everywhere. Okay, there we go. <laughs> and we're gonna add in a cup and a half of frozen mixed veggies. If you've been around for a while, you know I do not like peas but I don't mind them in something like this. If they're in a chicken pot pie or a vegetable soup or it's not a ton of them, I'm good. So I've got a cup and a half, they're still frozen, that's fine. And we're gonna stir this around and let it heat through for about five minutes because obviously those frozen, frozen veggies bring the temperature of the soup down a good bit. And then of course we're gonna be adding cheese, but that's at the very end. So I'll be right back. Oh, I was like, what? Steven came in here, he said, it smells amazing in here. It reminds me of shepherd's pie. I was like, what? It does. But he said, I know what you're making. <laughs> yeah, I already know. But I just wanted to tell y'all, I did salt and pepper this just now. I'm letting it continue to heat through. Damn. And I did make the full recipe because I'm hoping to have some leftovers that I can freeze. Like I can put in a, um, a large gallon Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer. That way we have a good soup on a night where I don't feel like cooking. So now we've got two cups of cheddar cheese. I'm gonna add it in in small amounts because I don't want it to clump together and I want it to melt pretty evenly. So I'm gonna stand here and do this for the next few minutes. That looks really good. It smells so good yeah. in this house. It's one of those cozy meals. It's uh, it's definitely shepherd's pie soup. Okay, <laughs> yeah, good. You definitely get I that. mean, it's got all of the elements of shepherd's pie, so. Yeah, some would say that shepherd's pie is not with beef, but with lamb, I think. Right. But um, I think sh the one with beef is cottage pie. Is that like right? Mince and tatties. Something like that, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, this is absolutely delicious. It's almost like a a chicken pot pie with the beef. Oh. That's kind of what I get. From okay, it. I'm digging so it. Yeah. Definitely like a pie, like a, a you know warm pie filling or pot pie. Pot, pot pie filling yeah. soup. Yeah. It's so thick because of those potatoes that are mashed up in there. Mm -hmm. And then you've got that cream in there and the sour cream. Mm. Just a little hint of cheese. It's not like a cheesy type soup. Yeah. But you can tell there's cheese in it. And there's texture in there. You got the, the yeah. veggies in there. Oh yeah. Good texture, so yeah. you'll like that. It's, this is a winner. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to try this one for sure. I had never heard of this. I thought it was a pretty cool concept. I think you'll enjoy it. In case you're wondering where Steven went, What'd you say, baby? Go backer. It's a go backer. He's in there filling up his bowl again. That's why I love soup. Yeah. It's so filling, but. It's filling, but it's not, you know. Yeah, it's not too much. You can enjoy another, another round. Oh uh, yeah, you can. So I just opened this new um, freezer Ziploc gallon bags. And 
they are they say stay open for easy filling let me show you so this bottom you're supposed to fold it i'm very confused has anybody tried these do you know how to do it but anyway i'm about to freeze the remaining shepherd's pie soup i just put on here that it just needs to be reheated like i don't have to do anything which is just nice because if it's a couple months from now and i'm like oh here's some soup in here do i need to do anything no i just need to reheat to have the date and all of that and then i'm just going to be using this which is what i always use to hold it open and fill it and i have let this cool it's not hot anymore and this is just going to go right into the freezer i made a mess already who's shocked okay i wiped it down Ta-da! also i saved a little bit of cheese for my cheese monster let's go find her hello cheese monster there you go all right let's see janet says salmon patties with homemade biscuits and syrup you talking about i ain't never heard of that before that is a first you talking about this maple, right here maple syrup 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 no it's syrup it can, it's interchangeable no it is syrup syrup how do you say it and where are you from you say syrup or syrup syrup See yeah. someone spelling it right now. S-E-E Jess -E -E dash R-U-P. <laughs> Jessica O'Donohue is from the South and she says syrup. And it, it just throws me for a loop every single time. I'm like, I Sometimes Southerners pronounce it correctly. <laughs> Rude. On very rare occasions. Okay, so salmon patties with yes. syrup. Homemade biscuits. With homemade biscuits. Well, that's fine. That's a given. But with syrup, though? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, I love my bacon with syrup, so I, I'm not, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. No, I'm not opposed to Next it. Next time I'll I make it, it, we're going to try it. A little syrup Who said this? There. Janet. Janet. All right, Janet. We see you. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to check it out. Okay, for our second recipe this week, we are just doing two recipes, so the second recipe is going to be our subby supper. Today's recipe comes from Heather. It's not her recipe. She found it on the internet and made it, and they loved it, and she wanted to share it with me. She said she stumbled across my channel not too long ago, and she's been binge-watching my channel. She is a stay-at-home wife. She's been married to her husband for 32 years, and he retired five years ago after 31 years in the Army. Thank you for your service. I guess their relationship works really well. Very similar to mine and Steven's. He loves to be fed and she loves to cook. So it just works out well that way. She said she stays busy with her three fur babies and their vegetable garden. She said even now her tomatoes and peppers are still going strong. She lives in Georgia. This recipe was another soup recipe that I'd never heard of before and it was very intriguing. So we're excited to try it. It is called white lasagna soup or you could even say white chicken lasagna soup. And you're gonna be proud I'm using sun-dried tomatoes again. I'm gonna chop them really finely, but I'm using sun-dried tomatoes because I do love that flavor. It's just the texture is not my favorite. Okay, so I've got this large soup pot. You can use a Dutch oven. I'm heating it to medium heat before I add in some butter. Now the recipe says to use a medium onion. I had a large onion, so we're just gonna use half of it. You need it finely diced. Okay, let's add in two tablespoons of butter and let that melt. Now that that's melted, we're gonna add in our onion. And we're just going to cook this until it starts to turn brown. While our onions are starting to cook over there, I'm going to remove these sun-dried tomatoes. It says we need about a fourth a cup chopped. I get fussed at anytime I scrape my knife blade side down. I get fussed at. It's hard to remember. Old habits. I think that's good. Let's go check on our onions. And then I've got this pot over here going to come up to a bowl so that we can boil our pasta. You want some type of short pasta. I'm using bow tie or you could break up lasagna noodles if you really wanted to. I mean this is lasagna soup but I'm just going to use these. Oh and I don't think I told you it's two cups of uncooked pasta. I don't know why I didn't show y'all but our onions are starting to get a little brown so I just added in about three teaspoons or a tablespoon of um minced garlic. I'm going to be adding in about two teaspoons of Italian herb seasoning, a little bit of black pepper. You can add in some salt at this point if you want to, but my chicken broth is not low sodium, so I'm not going to worry about the salt. And then optional is some crushed red pepper. My pasta water is ready, so I'm going to add in my pasta. Okay, I have stirred around all of our seasonings. We're going to add in our chicken broth. I've got three cups. Now, this is still just a little over medium. I'm going to add in our two chicken breasts at this point. They are uncooked. They are going straight in. 
They are gonna boil here in this water. And at this point, we're adding in our sun-dried tomatoes. One-handed, this is not very easy, friends. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit more so this will come up to a simmer. Once this comes up to a boil, I'm gonna reduce the heat a little bit then and cover it. And we're just gonna let that chicken cook all the way through. And they always say to do this right here, but like, it ain't working though. It ain't working. It's still, it ain't working. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Does that work for you? Cause it ain't working for me. We are starting to bubble. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the lid on and turn the heat down some, maybe medium low and I'll just keep an eye on it. It's probably gonna take 10 to 15 minutes uh, for our chicken to be done. Once it is done, we'll take it out and shred it. It is time for the spinach. You know what time that is. But we do need to roughly chop it, it says, but I have baby spinach, so I don't even think I need to roughly chop it because it's so small already, but these are very stemmy. We can't have that. So I'm gonna hang out over here and do this. We only need a cup of uh, spinach. I have heard from my friends who have YouTube channels, cooking YouTube channels, that y'all go over there <laughs> and talk to them about whether they remove their stems or not because I remove my stems. And I find that very funny. I don't think they remove their stems. I think I'm the only oddball out. That's okay, I'm used to that. Okay, our pasta is almost ready and then our chicken is too. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep this. I've got one cup of half and half and we're just gonna add a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch to it and whisk it around. And this is gonna go in the soup here in just a couple of minutes after I shred the chicken. So I'm just draining this pasta and I'm gonna set it to the side. We'll add it to the soup in a little bit. I've got one chicken breast out because it's already done. It was the smaller one. The larger one is so close, but I'm, it's still in the pot finishing up. I just need to shred this. So I'm gonna work on that. I'm trying to use my mix and chop to get it going. I know I can use my stand mixer too. I just was trying to not have to get something else out to dirty up. Okay, so I shredded all of our chicken. It's going back into the pot. Our cooked pasta is going in here. We're gonna add our half and half that I added the cornstarch to. And lastly, we're gonna add in our one cup of spinach. I'm gonna turn the heat back up just a little bit to bring this up. So all of this will heat through and it'll come to a simmer really good and that cornstarch will help to thicken it. Now the recipe says you can add ricotta cheese on top if you want to. We're not the biggest ricotta cheese fans. So we're gonna do mozzarella cheese and maybe a little Parmesan cheese on top. That'll give us our cheesiness to our lasagna soup. It's been about three or four minutes. I had the lid back on there so it would come back up to a bubble and it did and it is definitely starting to thicken so we're ready to eat. Okay, sir, tell me when. You about when, to have- When, when, when? I was about to say, you about to have my flesh in there with it, so. <laughs> you got a fire going, don't you? I do. I'll have to show them that. Y'all think we have enough firewood? When we had to cut down the trees to build the porch that we're on right now, we saved all that wood. So, yeah, we've got a fire going out there too. Oh, mm. oh, cheesy. Mm-hmm. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. It's like a really creamy. Ooh, some extra flavors in there. Maybe just a teensy weensy bit of spice. I add a crushed red pepper, yeah. Ah. Ah. It's like a very sophisticated chicken noodle soup. Oh, well, I mean, well, yeah, that's like basically creamy. what this is. Yeah. yeah, it's like, and you got the, the spinach in there. It's like an Italian version of chicken noodle soup. Okay. Really creamy, very flavorful. All right, so I'm gonna dig in and see mm. what I think. Mm -hmm. But it smells absolutely amazing. It's been torture being yeah. in there with this for the last a little bit, so. I'm gonna dig really in, good. I'll be right back. And for the cheese monster. Heather. Yes, Heather. Bomb.com, <laughs> okay? This is amazing. You did really good submitting this recipe. This is tremendous. Yay. Even with the white meat. I right? know, right? Really good. It's mm -hmm. very comfort foodish. Mm -hmm. If you used ricotta cheese, I could definitely see it being more lasagna-like, mm -hmm. but I really like the mozzarella and the Parmesan, so. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for the copycat Wendy's chili recipe. 
I've been looking for one forever. I love their chili better than anyone else's actually, so I can't wait to try this version. Yay, I'm so glad. So she's referring to last Friday's video where I yeah. showed five different chili recipes. Someone reminded me in the comments of a chili recipe that I didn't put in that. We've made more than five chili recipes on this channel, but oh, yeah. somebody reminded me, they said one of the favorites that they had had from my channel was the buffalo chicken white chicken chili mm -hmm. or the buffalo white chicken chili. I totally forgotten about that. So I will try and find that recipe and link it below. So if you want another chili recipe. I saw a lot of comments from uh, some Texans saying that no beans in the chili. Yeah. Don't put the beans in chili. I like that. It's, I like I like chili without beans myself. So, but I like all versions of chilies. So the only but if chili, I'm gonna put beans in my chilies, it has to be pinto, pinto beans. beans. The only chili that I eat without beans is the chili that goes on top of hot dogs. I don't want yeah. beans in that. Oh man, you gotta get some good chili. We're gonna have to make some good chili. Yeah, we're gonna have to make some good Texas chili. Look, maybe he, somebody out there. He who's, makes really good chili. Yeah, but I and I make the the style that doesn't have the beans in there yeah too. well like for but chili I don't call it texas chili no i mean but maybe it is for my birthday you made that i bet there's somebody out there in this just dying to send a texas chili recipe do it mandy in the making dot com dot com um there is when you scroll down on my website there's a little section that says submit your subby supper and it takes you to a google form it's very simple so if you have a good texas chili recipe with no beans yeah we want that we want that old timey family from way back generation Texas chili recipe. <laughs> not not that one that you find on, you know, when you go in there and you search something on the internet and you find, you know, five or six of them at the top there and they all just the same. We want that one from the backwater Texas deep south Texas family traditional chili recipe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. <laughs> There, there you go. So you know send, what it, I'm talking about. send it to us. Send it to us. That's all we got. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>